Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to grow strawberries on balconies or in a container garden. In this video I'm going to show you how to grow strawberries from seed, how to grow strawberries from bare roots and I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about strawberries so that you know exactly which variety you are going to pick for your garden. If you enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. Right, let's get straight into it. Strawberries are actually perennials, so they can take a frost and they'll be just fine. If you want to learn more about annuals versus perennial plants, I've actually done a video, so I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description box below. Now the thing with strawberries is, is that they actually can flower and fruit in the first year. It's just that they're not as productive. In the second year though, you will find that you'll actually get a better crop. Now that's really really important to bear in mind because if you grow your strawberries from seed like I'm going to show you how to do later on in the video you need to be prepared that those strawberries that you start this year may not do too well in terms of fruiting however next year they'll do a far better job. Now if you choose to grow bare root strawberries they will flower and fruit in their first year. It's down to you to make the right choice for you and your garden which way you want to grow your strawberries. Now, the other thing with strawberries is there are two kinds. So you have June bearing strawberries or you have ever bearing strawberries. And actually the ever bearing strawberries will continuously fruit. And as you may have guessed, the June bearing strawberries will push a load out of fruit and flowers in and around June. So once again, you need to do a little bit of planning and make sure that you are picking the right varieties for your garden. My garden is southwest facing, so from around about April, I get tons and tons of sunlight. So for me, I can extend my window a little bit. So what I tend to do, I will make sure that I get a ton of ever bearing varieties of strawberries so that I can continuously have fruit. Now I'm still able to harvest some fruit from my strawberries right now even though we are in January so <laughs> my garden is pretty crazy like that but you might be in a different kind of climate the microclimate for your garden might be completely different in which case you might opt for a June bearing variety. You can also get some alpine strawberries. Now, alpine strawberries are slightly different. Alpine strawberries produce a lot smaller fruit and they don't produce runners either. Don't worry, we will get into runners a little bit later on into the video. Right, let me show you some strawberry seeds. And I'm gonna show you how to start off your strawberry seeds indoors. First things first, you wanna pick the right container. Now, I'm going to use this old ratchet container. Um, in fact, to be fair, <laughs> this used to be a container of Busy Lizzie's that I had got from the store and I just kept it. Now, you want to make sure that you've got a container that's got some holes in the bottom because we are going to be bottom watering these strawberry seeds. You want to use your seed starting mix. If you're not sure about your seed starting mix, your seed starting compost or what to use, I've done a video on that, I'm going to link that into the description box below. And you want to start off with already moist compost. So let me go and get that sorted. These are some alpine strawberry seeds and as you can see they are absolutely tiny. Now I'm going to sow three or four seeds per cell. It doesn't really matter at this point if you sow too many because you can thin them out later on, although I never do that. But the important thing to remember here is that strawberry seeds require sunlight so you don't want to cover them with soil. This process works for normal strawberries as well as alpine strawberries. Once I've sown my seeds I then grab a spray bottle and then I'll give the seeds a spritz. This will help to make sure that the seeds don't get displaced and stay in the same place. I then cover it with cling film and then place it on a warm windowsill. Now I'm going to show you how to grow bare root strawberries indoors. In this bag, I have some bare root strawberries. I ordered them online. I'll leave a link to these in my description box as well. Let me show you what they look like. Ooh. Oh, oh, 
Oh. Oh, child. What a mess. The look on my face as I realise that some of these are rotting. What had happened was, I had this bag of bare roots for round about five or six days after after it had been delivered and I hadn't opened them up. So that's caused a little bit of rot uh, on some of these plants because when they package the bare root strawberries, there's quite a bit of moisture in there. Normally, when you buy them bare root, you don't get as much moisture. So um, <laughs> it's my fault there. But I've worked with strawberries for quite some time. They are one of the most resilient plants ever. I'm pretty confident that I can rescue some of these. I'm still gonna go through all the steps and show you exactly what to do. And then of course, when I do the next update video, I will let you know how these guys turned out. What we have here is the crown of the strawberry and here is the root system. Now these plants would have been growing last year and they would have been dug up, dried off and the roots would have been trimmed back. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to revitalize these, and then after that, we're gonna plant them. Throughout summer, we're gonna do a comparison between these bare root ever bearing strawberries and the alpine strawberries. Okay, let me show you the first step for our bare root strawberries. So I've just got a container here with some water in it. Now, you know me guys, it's just a ratchet container, and I've just filled it with some tap water. Then I have some seaweed fertilizer and I'm just going to add just about half a cap and then add that into the water. Now we want to get our bare root plants and just let the roots sit in the water. You want to try and make sure you want to try and make sure that the crown stays above water. So let's put another one in. This one is already making some new growth. And don't worry about it looking a bit ropey and dark. It will still bounce back. And we're just going to do that with the rest of them. So they're all sat in the water. The crowns are out of the water. And you don't have to use seaweed mix. If you don't have it, you can just use water. All you need to do... All we're doing is just reactivating these roots. So we're going to leave those in that ratchet container for around about an hour or so. Strangely enough, I'm starting off with dry compost. Now I've just grabbed an old pot and I filled it with some compost. Now I'm going to backfill this pot with some more compost. And once again, I'm going to make sure that I leave the crown out of the soil. I can't stress this anymore. The crown has got to be above the soil level when you've finished. If it's below soil level, the crown will rot away and your plant will die. You know, kind of like these bare roots that I'm working with now. Anyway, anyway, no, no, it's going to work. I have faith. <laughs> now remember, I started off with dry compost and that's because I'm gonna use this seaweed solution to water in these containers with the bare roots. Once you've watered in your plants, pop them onto a sunny windowsill. And if you happen to have grow lights, you can put them under the grow lights and then wait for those first sets of leaves to pop up. Now, at the time of recording this, we're in January. If I was to do this a little bit later on in the year, you can actually put your bare root plants directly out into containers on your garden but right now there's still a chance of frost so although it won't kill the plants it might damage them a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'll hold off from putting them outside for a bit I'll let them get a bit bigger inside and then I'm going to transplant them out once the seeds and the bare roots get big enough I'm going to come back and do a follow-up video and show you how to transfer them and put them into their final place eventually your strawberries will begin to make new leaves like this. It may be January, but I've got brand new strawberry babies outside on my garden. Now attached to this plant is this brown stem. If you follow it back, what we'll actually find is the mother plant. This stem is called a runner and the strawberry plants produce runners and at the end of each runner is a brand new plant. This is how they multiply. 
first year strawberries can also produce runners, but that will take away energy that they need to develop their roots so that they can produce their fruit. Whereas a bare root plant is mature enough to grow fruit and produce strong runners. Given the choice to grow strawberries from bare roots or to grow them from seeds, I think the best and most cost effective way of growing your strawberries is actually from bare root. So a pack of 10 bare root plants is going to be around about 10 pounds in the UK. You can even get them cheaper than that. So you've got a whole batch of bare root plants there that you can pop straight in, do what I've shown you to do there, and then in a few months time, they will be fruiting vigorously. Whereas if you start growing by seed, you're going to get less crop, you're going to be putting in a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of energy, especially when you're growing from seed and it's going to take around about 28 days to germinate. If you are a balcony gardener or a container gardener like myself, the likelihood is, is that you don't have a massive greenhouse, you don't have an allotment to store all of this equipment. So if you can get some bare root strawberries, do what I've shown you to do in this video, plant them out and get fruit this year. And on top of that, these bare root plants will produce runners themselves. So you can then multiply your crop for next year. For me, my vote is always going to be for bare root plants, but you just have to find ones that are of great quality and, you know, are not rotten to the core when you start. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give this video a like, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hopefully, I will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> Why was I singing? <laughs> see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> see you again soon. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> and as you can see here, these are just some of the bits that I've chopped off that had rotted away. As I said before, this is going to be the first of my series on strawberries. I'm going to order another set of bare root plants just in case these ones fail, but I'm going to make sure to keep you updated all the way through. See you again soon. <laughs>